Ivan Katz here at the Darnstown Disc Golf Course at the Swim and Rec Club, and uh, it's a tough course. I'm going to play the back nine today, and uh, I'll talk about which discs I throw, why I throw them, and also how to play this great game of disc golf. Let's get started. Number 10, there's Foofer running up the course there towards the basket, but it's 445 feet and it's actually down at the bottom here. I'll show you. There it is down at the bottom of the hill, so 445 feet into the top of the hill here and then off to the left. Obviously you don't want to go right because if you do, you're down the hill. Okay, so Foofer is again showing the way to number 10. After my drive, I am right over here, made it to the top of the hill, landed safely right in the middle there, but still no picnic. There's two ways to the basket really. I could throw, since I'm forehand flicking, out this way, or I could get a turnover shot this way. Not sure what I'm going to do yet. Okay, the king got me up over this ledge here. It's an S-curve turnover disc. I'll talk about that when I wrap up the hole here. But it left me, eh, certainly probably just outside of the circle. Circle meaning 10 meters, 33 feet, which means I could jump putt this. And uh, it's not my style, I don't jump putt, but um, tough putt actually. Uphill and trees along the way. But it's a birdie putt after all, so that's a good thing. Okay, so wrapping up number 10, the XL disc craft got me up the hill. Just uh, Pretty stable, to slight understable disc for me. So turns over and just keeps on a going, and uh, fights the fade for a bit, and then fades off. And fought it long enough to get me up the hill. Now throwing these discs. This is Heiser for the forehand. This is Anheuser for the forehand. This is Heiser for the backhand, right hand. This is Anheuser. You can control these discs. Let's say you had a dog leg right for the forehand flick. Well, you want to put as much hyzer as you can with an overstable disc, and it'll turn right for you. And then you have that same dog leg right in your throwing right hand backhand, and you want an understable flippy disc. And that's a disc that will turn over and then usually fade back a little bit. That's the curve that I was talking about with the second shot, the King. The King is a very fast disc. 14 is the speed. That's as, as fast as you can go in terms of speed. If you're a beginner, you want to start off with a mid-range, probably up to a speed 5, maybe 6 or 7 tops for a control driver in the fairway. Putters are 0 to 3. Mid-ranges are 3 to 5, 6. Control fairway drivers are 6, 2, 8, 9, right in there, and then maybe 10, and then you get to your distance drivers, which are 11, 12, 13, 14, and the second number on the disc, in this case of the king, is a 5, that's the glide, that means it will carry in the air, get you some extra distance. The third number, that's the well, they call it the turn, but that's stability. So this is a negative one. It's really like, because it's very broken in for me, it's very flippy, it's really like a negative four for me. It's very flippy. I can throw it with a ton of hyzer, have it turn over, and S out. And that's really what I did here to get me over the crest of that hill, and then it faded down by that tree there, giving me the birdie shot, which I was able to make with just an AVR putter. Now, the final number for this is four. That means it does have a lot of fade. If 
forehand flick, fade, means it's gonna fade off at the end. Right hand, back hand, it's gonna fade off this way. So, there you go, adjust yourself accordingly. If you throw left-handed, then if you flick left-handed, then the disc is gonna have the same tendencies to fade off this way. Basically, the same as right hand, back hand left hand flick and if you're a left hand backhand then you're gonna have the same tendencies as the flick for the right hand forehand flick. In other words, an understable disc for a left hand backhand player, if you throw it with hyzer it'll turn over this way. So there you go. That's what the numbers mean and that is how to play a difficult 445 foot hole here in Darnstown, Maryland. On to number 11. Okay, so super dog leg right here for number 11. There's the tee. And you gotta come all the way around these trees and then swing back there. Tough shot. Okay, the Discraft Express. It's got me uh, roughly 45, 55 feet from the basket. Through all the trouble trees and uh, dog leg right to the basket here. Difficult putt though. Plus, you've got a big drop off there. So, you don't want to run it here too hard. I think I want. I think I might want to try to float it in there. Running it is when you really go for it and uh, put a lot of power in there and make sure you get to the basket. This one might want to drop down into the basket so it doesn't roll down that hill. Tough putt. Okay, wrapping up number 11, a very tricky dog leg right. Now, I threw the Discraft Express. That's probably a little too straight for this one. What it did is it got me down, got me the distance, and the way I threw it, I did throw it on a lot of hyzer, so it just flipped up and went straight. I could have thrown a disc like my Crank SS, which definitely is a right turn disc for me. The buzz would be good, whether it's a mid range, and I'll have the power to get it to a 271 foot hole, even though it's downhill. So that would have been a good choice with a lot of hyzer. But the Discraft Express did its hyzer flip. Basically, throw it with some hyzer, it flips up and goes straight. And I did put a heck of a lot of hyzer on it, so it kind of just flipped up and went in a straight trajectory. Ended up to the left of the basket, but still safe. Safer to the left there than in the middle of all those trees. So that was a good compromise. Got me close enough for the birdie shot, which I was able to make with the judge here, kind of floated it in. And uh, again, I wasn't really running it, giving it a lot of power there. I wanted to float it in, that way if I missed, it wouldn't go down the hill back here and possibly into the creek. So, smart play there. A word about my disc golf videos. Birdies are very hard to get. Pars are very hard to get. So, I throw multiple discs. These are not true rounds. We're going out and just taking one shot, one shot, one shot, no matter what happens. I throw with multiple discs. I like to show you lots of different angles and explore different types of discs and what they do to show you guys what these discs do and how they fly. So, if you're coming out here and you're shooting plus 12, just try to shoot plus 11 the next time. It's a very difficult sport and you can play it against yourself and improve. And that's what disc golf is all about. Of course, you want to beat your friends too, but again, Throw what you throw, not what your friends throw. Just because your friends get 350 feet from a certain disc, doesn't mean you're going to. So play smart, play your own game, and just work to improve your own game. On to the next one. Well, they've really built a great challenging course here. Number 12, par three, 297 feet, and a hill on this side, and a creek down here, so wow. Very tough. Let's see how I can play this. Oh, 
Okay, the Nova TL3. Got me pretty close to the basket, probably outside of circle one, about 45, 50 feet. But I managed to avoid this whole creek and get through these really, really difficult trees by going out around this way. So really, really tough hole, even though it's 300 feet, very difficult. Okay, number 12, super tough with the water on the left and the hill on the right, but the TL3, believe it or not, fairway driver, speed 8, glide 4, negative 1 for the turn and 1 for the fade, which means once it gets going and turns up, it just stays on its course, and that's what it did. It hugged the ridge there until it faded, kind of S-curved out, and it kept me away from the water. And eh, not as close as I'd like to be to the basket, but 50, 50 feet or so for the birdie putt, which I made with a magnet, true to its name. Definitely went straight to the basket and right in. You should get yourself the same type of putter, get about 10, 12 of them, and that way you can just throw, 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 throw. AVRs are good. Get whatever you like, and uh, whatever feels comfortable, get a bunch of them and just practice, practice, press. Practice, 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 practice. Another note, where there's water, you'll want to have a towel with you to make sure you can dry your discs off. And also, write your name on the back of the discs to make sure that you can get them back. Of course, your phone number too. And uh, if you lose one, put the word out on the local Facebook group and hopefully you can get it back. Number 13, 350 feet. And the wind is uh, coming at us. It's a headwind, so. Super tough. My max throw is probably about 280, 285. So against the wind? Okay, let's see what I can do. Okay, my over stable halo air threw it around to the right with some Anheuser tried to fight that wind and fight the fade and uh, got me in line with the basket still uh, geez I don't know 150 feet away at least somewhere in there maybe 165 that's a long way away plus it's on a peninsula with water running in front and behind it Really tough shot. Okay, so the Discraft Challenger OS, nice disc that got me on a very straight path through the trees, straight at the basket, and then dropped down for 25 foot putt. Okay, the Wraith. Sometimes a uh, distance driver is good for people like me that don't have the distance really to get a putter or a mid range over this way. But um, I actually threw one mid range and one disc like this right here. It's a starlight ray. And with some hyzer, flipped up and got me right to the basket for the easy drop in. So, don't throw what everybody else throws. Throw what works for you. And sometimes they use different discs than other people would throw. But there you go. Works for my game. This one, thrown with uh, three quarter power. Did what I needed to do and got me to the basket for the easy drop in. Okay, the Crank SS, definitely my go-to disc, and it did a good job here. Got me around the trees to the left and, well, toward the basket, but still probably 150-ish feet away from the basket. So still tough and lots of creeks surrounding that basket too.
Okay, well that one's tough. 13. Started off with the Halo Air, thrown with some Anheuser to fight that wind around the right hand side to get it to kind of curve around a bit and that's what it did. Um, decent shot for me, you know, I don't have that sort of long distance and the headwind made it really tough for me today. So this one got me around and then came in with a nice straight Challenger OS, which is a great disc. I buy many of these discs at used disc golf stores and uh, you can save money that way. You can swap with your friends. So no need to throw new discs and buy expensive plastic. Now a word on DX plastic, this Cobra, DX plastic. So DX plastic is the least expensive and tends to wear in well. A flippy disc might wear out eventually and you might get too much turn and we'll have to retire it. That leads me to another tip. Make sure that you buy backup discs. If you really like a disc, when you can still see the weight and you know the type of disc it is, go out and buy that same disc in the same weight and even the same color if you like, if that's your thing, and you'll have a backup. There you go. So this disc, Challenger OS, got me straight across and straight towards the basket for putt-in with standard AVR here. Now I decided to throw two different routes, so that's what I did. Started off with my go-to disc, the Crank SS, and just put that one around to the left side, let it fight the wind also, and then fade back towards the basket a little bit. Still left me a ways away, but I really do love this disc. It's pretty stable for me, and depending on the amount of hyzer I give it, or straight, Anheuser, I can really get it to dog leg left, dog leg right, or just go a nice straight long distance with a little fade at the end. Crank SS, I love this disc. I have a review of it elsewhere on YouTube, check it out. Anywho, approach shot with the Cobra. Man, it's a tough, windy day today. Approach shot with the Cobra, and this is also a great disc. I have a whole video on the Cobra Unfortunately, my favorite Cobra got lost in Florida and uh, it's an alligator pond, so I doubt I'll ever get that one back. But um, there you have it. And then the putt in with the AVR. So tough hole, two different ways to go about it. Challenge yourself and uh, try different things sometimes. And sometimes risk reward, they might pay off. But there's always two or three different ways to shoot any particular hole in disc golf or basket whatever you want to call it so do what you do don't do what your friends do and hopefully you'll get the results on to the next one hole 14 340 feet par three very tough again against the wind Well, the Viking thrown with some hyzer just turns up and uh, turns over a bit, but uh, then it basically goes straight. So, not a great throw, but for me, I'll take it. Not the best angle. This tree is directly blocking the basket, but uh, I think I can get there. It's just on a hill, which makes it difficult. You don't want to roll down the hill, so that really tells you what shot to throw. If you throw something with a lot of hyzer this way, it might just hit and roll. Hopefully it just digs in if you throw the hyzer right hand backhand, but uh, ah, let's see what I can do here. Okay, number 14, wrapping it up. Viking, nice turnover, and then straight at my target. I have a whole review on the Viking. Check it out elsewhere on YouTube, love this disc. And notice it's DX plastic. I have nothing against DX plastic. And this one uh, says 2018 Ace Race. Got it at a used disc golf store in Florida. If somebody knows what that is, I love this disc. I have another one, and uh, I just love them both. You flick them with some power, and they turn up and go right at the target. Kind of like my old very broken in DX Cobra used to do the one that I lost. So these, I feel, have replaced that 
I can throw it with some hyzer, turns up, goes right at the target. I can get some really, really nice, very long birdies and things like that with this disc if I run it. So I love this disc. And like I said, if somebody knows what that is, let me know. But number 14, made easy by these two discs for the drop-in. On to number 15. Number 15, up on the hill there. And as you can see, <laughs> that kind of white card there in the distance, that's where the tee is. So you've got to come all the way around this corner here and then up towards the basket. Super, super tough. 362 feet and look at all those troubled trees along the way. Wow, this one is tough. Okay, the Starlight Wraith got me to the edge and you can see the basket there, sort of, just uh, up here. And uh, got me through all the trouble, but uh, still a tough approach. Okay, wrapping up tough number 15. Starlight Wraith got me pretty far down the straight there and I was able to at least see the basket though not very well and uh, that set me up for the approach with the Ace Race again love this disc and uh, putt with the Judge another one of my main putters on to number 16 number 16 270 feet, but straight uphill. Tough. Okay, the king. Remember to throw it high because I'm throwing uphill and it did the little S curve and got me uh, uh, not very close to the basket, probably 130, 140 feet away, unfortunately. Okay, so wrapping up number 16 in the king. Throw with some hyzer, but high. So it turned over, went up the hill, straight at the target, with a nice S curve as predicted. And then my ace race, the other one. Love these things, great approach, great putter. And uh, on short holes, it's great. Just fire it straight in the basket for the easy drop. -in. On to 17. Well, I've looked around a bit and uh, I can't find number 17's tee pad. So I'll just throw from here. Well, the whole rest of the course was laid out nicely. No trouble finding that, but I know this is 17's basket, but I just couldn't find the tee pad for it. Oh, well. Number 18, right through the bushes there. 266 feet. Okay, the Halo Air got me close to the basket, but uh, still got to go through these trees. Pretty tough. Okay, well, that was a good approach shot. Really tough course. Had to break through the bushes there. And uh, it's just a challenging, tough course here, and really enjoyed it. Now, sometimes you can flip your disc to mark it. Other times, you have a mini, and you put it right there, then you can pick it up and throw it in. So technically, I'm not supposed to pick up the same disc and throw it like that, but there you go. Finishing off with a par here, and uh, wow, what a fun, challenging course. Well, thanks for watching this round of disc golf at Darnstown Disc Golf Course. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Check out all my other disc golf videos, disc golf reviews, my COVID-19, done to Hey 19 video, Chris Isaac's Wicked Game, literal video. Also, just Google Drive and Ivan in your favorite car and you'll see my car review. And check out all my other videos. Right, Pooper? Thanks for watching. I'm Ivan Katz.